What's up, guys? Just once again, before we jump into this episode of the Better Podcast, I want to let you guys know that it is sponsored by SkinHub, the only trusted CSGO unboxing website. Once again, if you guys are into that sort of stuff, you're in the market to unbox some CSGO skins, head over to skinhub.com and use code BAITED for a free $1 credit. That's out $1 credit with code BAITED or just click the referral link down below. Clown, take it away. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Baited Podcast. I'm your host, Colossal is Crazy, and we're joined here once again by Chad. Anything for views? Good morning. DJ Killer Keemstar. I did you? You just say my name. You don't even give me an introduction. Like I'm also here. You just can, can I my name. Can I just the... introduce the guest as well? We have to get through this. And the guest today is Boogie, 29, 88 pounds of Space Odyssey. Hello to you, Boogie. <laughs> How you doing? Fuck. Congratulations, you congratulations on losing the weight, though. Seriously, you're not that fat anymore. Yeah, I'm down to 392 pounds, which is the lowest I've been since fucking high school. So, what was what was the 2988 part in your name? You know, oh. people always like want some magic answer to that. But one day I was trying to get boogie at yahoo.com when they first offered mail, and they're like, "Nope, but we could give you boogie 2988." I'm like, "Okay, that's it." So it's just it's random. Just- just four random. random digits that Yahoo came you up got, with. You got really lucky because it sounds nice. Like Boogie 2988. Like it sounds, I don't know. What if it was Boogie 6969? Oh, that sounds a lot I better. Don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a bit aroused. Anyway, I want to talk about uh, Logan Paul. Is, is that okay? Are we, is that, is, are we beating a dead, a dead animal here? Or, eh, you know, fuck a, oh my God. Person? What kind of fucking joke is this? Are we beating a dead animal? No, he's hanging. <laughs> Either way, oh. Boogie, I did see you put out a tweet. Forgi- do, you, do you forgive Logan Paul? No, I mean, yes and no. Like, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, that's a small step in the right direction for a very long path, right? And I'm always going to be critical of another YouTuber. Hell, I'm critical of Keem all the time. I'm critical of everybody. But um, when they do something good, when Keem does something good, I'm the first one to tweet about it. And this is something good. Logan did something good. He might have done it for shitty reasons, but who cares? He did something good. Uh, uh, you know, that, that charity, the National Suicide Hotline, when I was in my 20s, they saved my fucking life. Genuinely, I would not have made it through the, my 20s without them. So, if the, so a him, donating million, that, him donating that money meant a lot to you. Yeah, a quarter million dollars to save people's lives. That's a, I mean, that's a step. That's a step. What I want from Logan Paul, you know, like it, 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 the whole Maverick thing, it's all about being different. It's all about being different. Being different is not necessarily good, right? You know, I might eat my fucking soup with a straw up my asshole. That's different, but that's not a better way to eat soup. You know, Joey Salads is a fucking Maverick. Let me tell you, that guy's a little different. He's definitely fucking different. Uh, but I mean, but why can't a Maverick, why can't a Maverick be someone who does shit a little bit better? Why can't a Maverick be a guy who fucking, when he sees a homeless guy, gives him 20 bucks? Why can't it be a Maverick be somebody well, who helps well, an old a, lady a Maverick, across? A Maverick will give a homeless guy 20 bucks. It's just got to be on camera. Exactly. Well, right. Yeah, I mean, no shit. Uh, listen, Logan, Logan Paul has taken and manipulated that, that word to basically be an asshole, you know, like that. Uh, uh, being a maverick is a way to get away with being a dick. You know, uh, when they were over in Italy and they were jumping in the fucking rivers and all this shit, I'm a maverick, bro. I'm a savage. Like, like, come on, dude. All this is just manipulation to get away with nonsense. And the reason why they're even doing the nonsense is because it drives more views. It, gets you know more kids and like i shit you that stuff like i shit you not i'm not hypothesizing here when i say that kids repeat what they see on his shit um but literally i had a, a nephew who broke his leg last summer and he broke his leg by jumping off of a bridge when i asked him why he jumped off a bridge he goes i was just being a maverick bro Literally, word for fucking word. I would have punched and like, him in the no, head. No, no, no. It's not just, listen, that is not like an uncommon thing. Like, you don't understand. If you go to any middle school in America right now, those kids are wearing Jake Paul merch and Logan Paul merch. The same way, like, when we were kids, we used to wear, like, I don't know, like, Nike and Adidas or whatever. Like, these guys have taken over. And I got a source telling me, I got a source telling me, that Logan Paul is making ten million dollars a month, a month on merch alone, and I I ran the numbers and it it, it makes sense. 
I don't. I don't. I don't fucking doubt it. I think. I think it's possible. But let's let's not deny the fact that a million fucking dollars is a hell of a lot of money. In in hindsight, yeah, to you a million dollars, but to him, what's that? That's like two vlogs, you know. That's like that's like his pocket money for a, for a vacation. A million dollars is like basically a tenth of what you know he would make just on his merch, according to that source. And listen, the reason why I say I ran the numbers and it makes sense is because if one percent, if one percent of Logan Paul's audience, all right, uh, spends you know on average fifty dollars, okay, fifty dollars, you know, buying merch. During that month, he's making that much. He's making ten million dollars. I don't know. Maybe I just can't get my head around like these massive fucking numbers. I just, I just can't fathom it. But even, even so, like I feel like we should, we should forgive him for this amount of money, because I think if someone apologizes in the future, they're going to be like, oh well, what's the point? Because a million fucking dollars couldn't even cut the cheese. So what's the point of even apologizing? It's the most expensive apology in YouTube fucking history. Well, to me, it's not even about a, it's not even about a dollar value. It's a matter of like knowing that he took the time to stop and realize why what he did was wrong and how it was wrong. And then to try to undo a little bit of the damage and then try to like, you know, mitigate it. And, and, and even if it had been a half a million, had it been a quarter million, have it been it was pocket change to him. Um, it would have just, it's the effort. It's the effort. Right. And, and I don't want it to be like a, that's the biggest thing. If it's just a one-time effort, then fuck you, Logan. I hope you're listening and fuck you if it's a one-time effort. But if this is a consistent thing, if this guy goes into charity work, if this guy starts doing more stuff like this and we start to see it, uh, once every three months or every month, we does cool shit with all the power he has. That would be awesome. If you start spreading a positive message, then that would be awesome. And that's what I'm saying. That's one small step. I hope he a, continues to fuck around. I hope he continues to fuck up if he gives this much much, much money each time to li listen listen two things are going to happen two things are going to happen one he's going to continue to fuck up and he's going to be successful or two he's going to straighten his ass up and be a much better person and then he's his career is over because he can't maintain that career without fucking up you have to fuck up you have to be a maverick you have to jump in the rivers you have to vlog with a dead body you have to do questionable sh shit you have to make a music video where you're doing a diss track on santa claus saying that you fucked mrs claus that's the type of stuff you need to do to make it to be on the level of logan paul and that's sad as fuck but that is true i, I don't agree with that keen because his fans are very young at the moment but they mature with him, if you like. So if he reverses his character, he matures, then there's a very much a possibility that his fans are going to mature with him and he won't die off. So I don't agree I, with that. I, dis I disagree with you, Clown, because you got to understand, you know, those kids might be older, but new kids are coming into the marketplace to watch YouTube every single day. Right. I mean, that's the way that he'll start getting negative growth. You know, I don't think it'll like kill it overnight. Um, and I think he'll, but I think his view numbers will go down. I think his sub numbers will go down. And at the end of the day, that backlog history of him being a jackass is always going to be there anyway, you know, and YouTube serves it like it's fucking hot cakes every single day anyway. Like his back catalog is 10 times better than any of ours, you know? Yeah. But I mean, at the, but again, anyone's backup uh, catalog doesn't affect them. You know, Shane Dawson, we just seen got exposed for some horrible, cringy, you know, edgy jokes, you know, that doesn't affect him. Same thing with, you know, Philip DeFranco. Same thing with me, you know? Yeah, so, same thing I was well, going to say. Yeah. Well, same thing with me. I mean, shit, man. I used to be such a piece of shit. You know, I still, to this day, uh, I mean, I check on him 4chan every six months or so. But I used to be like fucking, I was a straight up edgelord in my 20s, you know? Dude, what is up with, I seen a video from Gamer on Mars. Gamer, where yeah, he yeah. exposed you for fat shaming boogie you fat shame okay. somebody okay no i what? so okay so uh, just before my surgery they the the 4chan fit board became obsessed with me they were posting two or three or four threads about me every day and like there there's like a dead pool of whether or not i would die there's like money involved and <laughs> i shit. don't mean to laugh but... no laugh it's i thought it's fucking hysterical <laughs> these people are betting whether or not i'll die during surgery or whether or not i'll get out of six months or whether or not i'll lose any of the weight and shit and it was just a absurd so i thought hell 4chan is my roots i was posting uh pre-boxy days you know and so you know back when 4chan was good and here's the hint it was never fucking good kids 
Uh, but I figured I'd just go back to my roots and just say, hey, guys, I'm one of you. I don't know why you guys have your you know panties in a wad. I know it's just memes, but hi. And I posted a trip code on Twitter to let them know it was really me. And then I like posted there and I adopt their speak. When I go there, I adopt their speech. And so I said to them, I'm like, hey, you fucking beta cuck piece of shit. Why are you so worried about me every day? Why don't you go get your own shit together instead of posting on 4chan every day? Why don't you get off your fucking ass and chat up? Get out there and be the fucking Chad you're supposed to be. Not some fucking beta cuck piece of shit sitting on his fat ass eating Cheetos, right? Like, that's how they talk on the board, so that's how I talked on the board, right? But if you take that out of context, you know, I would never call a homosexual the F word. Never in a million years would I call a homosexual an F word. Never. But would I use the term old fag or new fag on 4chan? Of course I would. Why? Because that doesn't even mean, that's not what that word means there, right? And so in context, right? But if somebody sees, if somebody takes that out of context, so are you disparaging homosexuals? No, of course not. Why would I ever do that in a million years? A, re- a reporter just hit me up and they're like, you know, what is up with this uh, old group that you were in called uh, the FAG? Because that was like my old gaming trolling group, which I started YouTube with. And I'm like, uh, yeah, it stands for the Federation of Asshole Gamers. And she's like, well, why did you call it FAG? I go, because every game we went into, people called us a fag. So we called ourselves fags. And then when people asked us, you know, or called us a fag, we're like, yep, yep, we are. And when she got that answer, she was so upset. I know she wanted to, like, she wanted more, but she she accepted it. I I, I guess... other people seem to mis mis uh, misstrewed words these days because like I, like we we so loosely throw around these words like they because they, they have no meaning they've been desensitized to us we don't use them in the context where we might be racist or homophobic like I I, I can recall several times today where I've said words that could be turned into oh you're racist or you're homophobic. If we could go back to the people betting on Boogie's death, isn't it strange how when you hit a certain level of fame, you stop becoming a person in these people's eyes and you become a thing? I was like, never. They look at you. I was they look at you like an object. I was <laughs> never a person in these people's eyes, man. Like fat people aren't people to some of these people, man. I don't fucking understand. No. But you know, but like, <laughs> oh, whoa, what'd you say, clown? <laughs> Nothing. I was waiting oh, for it. Cloud, That's I fine. heard you yeah. say you hate not. fat people. It's just I'm in a call with three fat people. No, uh, listen, Boogie, I can oh guarantee you Cloud was on that board putting money on your death. <laughs> I, I, have never used Cloud? Cloud? I have never been on that website. Never. Clown, you have a seriously hatred for for fat people. Why is that? What I is the roots I of don't that? hate fat people. I think they're just no, fun to... No, you do. No, you no, truly do. No, you do. I think they're just fun to make fun of, and it's fair enough to make fun of them. No, 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 because no, no. Because they no, brought no, it on you... themselves. It's their fault they're fat. All right, well, I'm going to make... Okay, I'm going to make the argument. I'm going to make the argument against that, okay? So I did. I put the food into my fucking mouth, right? But the, one of the reasons... And when you you set in on a fucking, fucking Overeaters Anonymous um, meeting, you're going to start seeing some pretty big patterns. I was molested. Most of the people that get to my size are molested. I have chronic depression and chronic anxiety. Most of the people my size have chronic depression and chronic anxiety. And we fucking are eating ourselves to death. We're suicidal. That's why I was doing it. I wanted to die. I wanted to die young. I wanted to die by 30. I was eating to die, not eating to live. I wanted to fucking die. And it was because I was fucking chronically depressed and chronically anxious and chronically fucking miserable. And the fatter I got, the more miserable I got, so the more I fucking ate, you know? And, like, that's the cycle that you hear from everybody that hits five, four or five, six hundred pounds. These people are fucking broken. They're shattered, Sure, right? sure. I'm and not making they, fun of you. You no, as an it's example. Fine. I'm not no, making I'm fun saying, of you for having depression. Even if you do, that's having fine. Having anxiety, you know? etc. I'm making fun of you for right. being fat. That's it. That's it. Right, but that's, a side but that's the reason. That. Clown, clown, clown. I got a good idea. Okay, so recently, you I know you really don't like this, but I've been talking to FouseyTube. Fo- I feel like FouseyTube has changed, all right? I really do. And I know you hate his guts, but listen, I was thinking, you know, maybe I could call I could call my boy Fousey, and we could set up this social experiment. What we'll do is we'll take you somewhere to get molested, all right? We'll take you somewhere to get abused, clown, and we'll see like a year from now if you gain any weight. <laughs> that's smart. Let's do it. Are, are, are you down? Most, are you down? He, that's probably the, the most thing ridiculous as well. thing I've ever heard. Here's the thing as well, clown. You could spin the argument. <laughs> you could spin the argument <laughs> your <laughs> way by saying that you're gonna get cancer and you did it yourself because you smoked. So when you get cancer, wait, wait. I'm gonna have no sympathy for you. Oh yeah, no, stop, that's Chad. Fair Chad, Chad, that, Chad, Chad, stop! Don't let him out of this. Don't let him out of this, clown. 
Are you willing to be molested to see? Oh my, that's not even funny. Don't let him out of this. Mo it's I'm not, not making funny. jokes. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I'm not no, this making jokes. This is actually pretty so funny. I'm gonna. Go, I'm. I'm gonna say this is hilarious. Let's have, who's gonna, let's who's have some like me? greasy. Who's gonna rate me, Fousey too? We're gonna have some like greasy fucking homeless dude who just disgusts <laughs> you to look at him, like with boils on his hands and stuff, and he's just gonna slowly jerk you off while looking in your eyes, uh, and it's yes. just gonna, like the fucking blood from his boils and the pus and shit all, and he'll spit fucking dis diseased teeth out of his mouth into your mouth while he's doing it. And, and you fat, have to go. He has to be fat. That'll just add. To, you have to. Yes. To the yes. Yes. Test. Okay, so a, a, a fat person is going to, like, jack you up or something, right? Me, right. Something, something, right? So a fat right? person Are you willing rapes me, to do it? and I become fat subsequently. No, we, we see if you become fat. We, we can't see. use it's the a, R word. Come on, dude, can we just stick to molest? Why do you got to say the R word? I mean, the R word means, uh, I mean, to me, the R word mostly means penetration. I don't. Well, I the guy doesn't have to so. be retarded. Uh, no, I said uh, I was talking Jesus about rape. Not, oh my god! Jesus hey, if the Christ. rapist is going to be fussy tube, then that's going to be the fucking case. Oh my god! Okay, I well, probably didn't right. know I what I was getting into when I came on this podcast, but you know what? <laughs> I'm still having fun, so fuck it. Uh, <laughs> holy shit! Uh, you, spent, you spend five minutes talking to fussy tube, and you come up with this idea. I'm not surprised. I'm not fucking surprised. I've never <laughs> talked to that guy. I have no clue. I barely know. The only thing I know about FouseyTube, sorry if you're listening, is like he showed that video of his dog dying and shit. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't that watch was, that. That was I didn't fucking watch that. great. That was great. He also showed a video of a kid dying of cancer and used it to defend himself. Just a daily reminder for you. Who did? Uh, FouseyTube. Yeah, FouseyTube. Wow. I mean, basically, FouseyTube was going through a lot of shit, right, Buggy? Like, everyone was, like, attacking him, right? For, for, and they had a just reason to. He was doing a lot of shady, fake social experiments and whatnot. And during the big hate train, when everyone was, like, calling him out and really exposing him for being fake, uh, he went to one of his fans' uh, hospital rooms that was dying of cancer and, like, made a vlog with them to, like, kind of make it, it it appeared that he was trying to get good pr right so did you not know yeah. that oh shit you got you got to watch my video on it self-promotion i the only time i ever really get into the drama stuff is mostly when it's going to affect my fucking livelihood or my fucking audience or my fucking like me mentally personally it's like when it was the nicole arbor stuff and she's making fun of fat people my audience is really affected by that so i'm gonna to go to bad if somebody's fucking up in a way like logan paul that's going to affect youtube in general i'm gonna talk about it but if it's like you know and I, I guess Fousey, since he never like crossed over i don't remember him crossing over anyway to like mainstream media had he done that i probably would have been more aware of it but no that's fucked up i mean shit i did a make a wish you know at uh, vidcon a couple years ago and i like put him in 30 seconds of my vidcon video because he asked to be in it but i could never imagine walking into somebody like a cancer ward and like well it was ugh. it wasn't it wasn't that he did it it wasn't that he made the vlog it was that he did it and made the vlog when everyone was attacking him. That that was the issue. He, he he did it. He did it to stem off all the hate. Like, hey, look, I'm a good person. I'm visiting someone that's gonna die next week. You know, right? Like, and he did die. The kid, by the way, he did fucking die. So that makes it even <laughs> Why do you have to bring that up? Why do you have to bring that up every time? Well, it just makes it even worse. It just makes it even fucking. No, worse, just leave story. it as a cliffhanger. You don't have to. You don't have to put the nail in the coffin, clown, dude. You could just leave him as maybe. Well, he no, died, I need to put the nail it. in the fucking coffin because you're friends with him now this evil well, piece of bullshit. shit you didn't have to put him in the ground like that i I'm did i have to convince you that fuzzy tube is a fucking evil prick i'm gonna be a real piece of shit right now and let's say that that makes it even worse because the dude died already and so there's literally no good that came from it it was only a pr piece at that point so he died the next fucking week then it doesn't matter Holy he's shit. dead right like well, it, what it, they they died they died happy though they died happy they got to be their hero. Yeah, he's still too. dead. Dead is dead. It doesn't matter if you're smiling ear to ear. If you're dead with your mouth and fucking Jennifer Aniston's asshole, it doesn't matter. You're dead. Let me let me attempt to defend Fousey Tube. Okay, so oh my god, I was one of, clown. Just let me talk for a second. Okay, you 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 can respond. I was one of the main people going after FouseyTube because FouseyTube came after me, all right? And he was saying that these drama channels were fake and they pick up on anything because basically FouseyTube and RiceGum, they did a fake publicity stunt where they were acting like they punched each other or got in a fight. And I came out and I said, 
I came out publicly on Drumler and I said, this is fake. Okay. Uh, Philip DeFranco said it was fake. Scare said it was fake. And then the next day, FouseyTube acted like he tricked all the drama channels into picking up this story and he tricked all of us. And it was like, no, we all said it was fake. What are you talking about? So at that moment, uh, FouseyTube started attacking us. We started exposing him and his fake social experiments. That's how this whole beef even started. But during that time, I saw FouseyTube as an egotistical, narcissistic, like, I mean, this was the time when he was saying that he was the fucking, what was it, Tupac of YouTube? Like, it was ridiculous. That is not the same person today. He has changed. And that is why I'm cool with him. He is not the didn't same they, guy. They also, didn't so they also you're expose saying... Fu no, no, wait, wait. Didn't they also expose FouseyTube for botting votes for, like, the YouTuber of the Year award or whatever the award that he won? I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah I remember that, but it was never They did, proven. yeah. It was never proven. That's fucked up. See, so, Keem, you're after, saying after, that... After, after all his actions, that's something I'd believe he'd do. Keem, you're saying now that FouseyTube is not an egotistical narcissist. Not anymore. I, I'm saying that he is nowhere near that person that we were all fighting a year ago. He's just a completely different person. Well, I you use those two particular character traits, so I'm saying you're saying they're completely reversed well, now. Well, actually, when I talk to him, he just seems really insecure. you got to understand... Okay, not only did the whole community tear him down, but his channels died, all right? Uh, like, you know, every every great thing about him, every achievement that he have had has been kind of stripped away, and he's been, like, kind of knocked down to, like, you know, a, a normal person, I feel. What you have to Where, understand, Keem, is that narcissism, and you should know this because you are a bit of a narcissist yourself. Oh fuck off! No, you are. Man, I'm better than you and everything. Okay, can we right. stop for just a second? If you're if you're a fucking e celebrity, you are a fucking narcissist. Okay, don't think you're fucking any better than any of the rest of us. We are all narcissists. We are all egotistical. You wouldn't be in the fucking social media game if you weren't. That's part of the deal. I'd say I say we all have an ego to a certain degree. Yeah, but I mean, there's a difference between having I mean, a little Cloud, bit of an ego, your ego and being a full You blown think you're better than everyone else just because you're skinnier. But narcissism, motherfucker, narcissism, you think you're so great that the world will want to watch or hear you. That's that's the definition of narcissism. We are all narcissists, don't I? Know, again, fuck. like I said, there's a difference between having a little bit of an ego and being a full blown fucking narcissist. OK. All right. Well, by, you by the definition. And Keem, st Keem starts a little bit of a narcissist, like it, it's common knowledge. Oh, but fuck my, off. You, 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 you just kind keep of are. You saying kind of that. Are. No, come on. You kind of are. But I mean, my no, point, I'm my not. point I'm is. Not. My point is, Keem, that insecurity is something that goes very much hand in hand with narcissism. So FuseyTube has always been fucking insecure. That's why he got a fucking head tattoo. He was very insecure about his fucking head. But that doesn't mean he's not a narcissist. That doesn't mean he's not egotistical just because he's insecure at the same time. If you look up narcissism, you understand more about narcissism then you understand that insecurities go hand in hand with that. Okay, well, okay, good good point. But I, I will say I haven't seen the fake Fousey tube where I'm better than everyone in a long time. I disagree. I, I disagree. I see it every fucking day. The cunt streams on Twitch now. He pulls some right bullshit on his Twitch stream. The other day he invited over two of his friends who had broken up. I don't know how long ago they had broken up. Sat them down on camera and asked them in front... Set in the title, admitted that he was going to ask them this without telling them. So, why did you guys break up? Like, earplugged one person so he couldn't hear. Let this girl tell the world why they broke up. Then took his headphones off, did the exact same thing to her. Didn't tell them what each other said and said, Oh, you guys can go home and watch the stream and find out. That's fucked up. That's interesting. Cuts, I'll, I'll give you credit. Wow. Up. In wow. The back, in the back of his head, he's thinking... Look at all these viewers on my Twitch channel. That's I don't know. You guys like see. Here's the thing. He's disappeared. Oh my from god! The was it was it FouseyTube that did that or Logan yeah. Paul? That sounds it was like a Logan Tube. Paul. Thing. Exactly. He's disappeared from the spotlight, so you don't pick up on all the little things, Kim. But I fucking do. When people fuck up, I don't forget about it. That's the, that's the thing with you, Kim. One week later, you're like, oh, yeah, let's just fucking forgive him. Let's just fucking. I forgive, forgive him. everyone yeah. because yeah, because yes, you God. fucked yes. up too. Because you fucked up too. So you feel like if you forgive other people. Next time someone brings up what you've done in the past, you'd be like, but look at all these people I've forgiven. No. Oh, listen, Chad listen, is just listen, listen. fucking That's fact here. Fucking fact. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. No. Why the fuck are you two tag teaming on me? That's ridiculous. Well, it was okay. you two on I... me last episode, so it's only fair. Listen, listen. I forgive people because I've made mistakes before, right? 
just like you said, but it's not because I believe that I need to be forgiven too. It's not for selfish reasons. I forgive them because it's fucking life. We all fuck up. Gonna forgive Tommy C? If some, some, yeah, forgive if, Tommy. If, if he, like, first of all, he's not supposed to be mentioned on this show. Oh, uh, sorry. I, 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 no, I'm sorry. I forgot. But though you have talked about but it. I, but I, but I will, I will answer the question. Yeah. I will answer the question. If if he stopped the nonstop harassment, and you you have to back me up here, has it been a primarily not a hundred percent, but like let's say fucking ninety three percent attack on me nonstop for a year versus versus you attacking him? You mean? Yeah, because like yeah, I, yeah, I'll that's respond. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll res I'll respond here and there to tinfoil, but the majority of everything is started from him. Yeah, right. no, that's fair. I, I, remember, that's I remember there was one point where we all vowed just just to block him and ignore him, and that that actually so, lasted so a really clown, long time. So, clown, clown, how can I can't forgive him if it just keeps on going on? If it stopped, if he stopped the obsession, you know, <laughs> attacking me nonstop, yeah, I could forgive. All right, him. that's good to know. Good to know. I don't even know who the fuck you're talking about. Holy shit! Good, don't worry, Boogie. Don't worry. You just, just, just sit, sit. We can't get into that story. I don't yeah. want to give him. We'll, exposure. we'll bring, we'll bring Boogie back in the conversation. Here's, now. here's anyway. what I, here's, here's what I weird. Here's what I will tell you. Like I get a lot of shit for like trying to be the nice guy on YouTube, and you're not like real or whatever. And you know, one of the reasons I am so fucking, I, I like preach niceness on the internet is, yeah, I want people to be fucking nice to me, of course, right? I, that's why it, there's nothing wrong with being forgiven, forgiving because you want to be forgiven. I don't, you know, I think that everybody, there's no such thing as altruism. Everybody has an ulterior motive to some extent, you know. Uh, well, I'm very I'm glad millions, you said that. Honestly, I'm glad you said. You know, that. anybody who gives a fuck, you know, Bill Bill Gates is not trying to cure malaria because. Uh, he hates malaria. He's doing it because he wants a legacy and he saw an opportunity to fix some shit. And that would be his legacy if he did it right. You know, I mean, there's no such thing as true altruism. And I, you I know, always find it very strange that you're so much different than your videos. Like in your videos, you are like a really, really, really good guy. All right. To the point where it's like it's it's like pandering and almost like disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine. I, I get but, it every day. I get it every day. You know. But when we get you on a podcast or you go on other people's podcasts, like H3H3's podcast. I, or my I nightly Twitch thing. stream, twitch.tv slash boogie 298 I literally do it five nights a week. So what I explained to you, that let me, let me when you're there, you. you're normal. You're just a normal guy, you know? Right. So what it comes down to is on YouTube, that is the person I want to be. That is the person I'm trying to be. That is the person that I want to be every fucking day. I wake up out of bed and I'm like, I'm going to try to be boogie today. That's the person I'm going to try to be. And then when I'm on Twitch... I go the opposite direction. And when I'm on a podcast like this, I go the opposite direction. I'm kind of being a little bit more to my 4chan roots, a little bit more to my like shitty sense of humor and my jokes and stuff like that. Um, because I don't know, that's interesting to me, but the person that I actually am is somewhere in between the middle of those. Right. But Boogie, the person I am on YouTube is the person that I want to be every day. That's the person I'm trying to fucking be. That's the idealized version of me. And that's no different from almost any other YouTuber I've ever talked that's to. That's really crazy because the person I am online is the person I never want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really glad that you, that you said that, Boogie, because I've always thought that. I think my main criticism for you would be that because you're playing this character up a bit on your YouTube channel and you're giving opinions at the same time, I don't feel that many of your opinions are valid because of that and because you're too, you're too concerned with what people think about them. So, okay, that's what a lot of people think. And, and at the end of the day, what, what, uh, the three things that determine my opinion of something. Um, number one is whatever I fucking believe. The problem is what I believe is generally not a black or white answer. It's always a gray answer. You got to remember, I was raised and beaten and molested by a woman who fucking was evil, straight up evil. But at the same time, I helped bury that woman. I held her hand as she died and gave her a good death. Okay. Um, because that's, I, I saw the good in her too. She also was a Head Start teacher for 25 years. She got parents off of welfare and into trade skills and, and getting back into work and, and, and fucking ra raising their kids right. She did a lot of good in the world. So I, I look at everything as both good and bad, a pile of good things and a pile of bad things. And I generally don't give that big of a shit because I have chronic fucking uh, uh, depression that makes me not give that big of a shit. I don't normally, normally care. So when I look at something on YouTube, statistically speaking, I'm going to be true to myself, which means I don't give that big of a shit. 
So I'm just going to look at both sides of it to see if it's interesting. And if it's interesting, then I'll talk about it. And very rarely do I have enough of an opinion to even say, but I'll, uh, if I do, I'll be like, you know what? Fuck that guy. I'll say that in a video. If I feel that way, I just generally don't. The second thing that I'm always looking to do is find stuff that directly impacts me or impacts my audience in some way. Right. And so if it's, if it's a topic that's, that's interesting to me and I, yet there's a certain amount of social responsibility that I want to take there, but I'm never going to pull a punch. I'm never going to change a story. I'm never going to change a fact. I'm never going to leave out information. Um, and then the third approach, the third thing that's important to me is to be as balanced as possible and to show every side of a thing for the, for the sake of giving someone an opportunity to, to, come up with their own opinion. And so I'm not here to tell you what I think. I'm here to help you decide what you think. And, and so here's what the people on the left are saying. Here's what the people on the right are saying. Maybe here's what I think sometimes, but most of the time, no. What do you guys fucking think? And sure. that's always been my approach. I, th and, I think that's fair. So, Personally, I'm not interested in that at all. I want to hear. And that's fine. I want to hear someone's true opinion all the time. That's fine. But my, but you, when I tell you I don't give a shit, that's my true opinion. I generally don't give a shit. Trump may very well be driving this country into the goddamn ground, and I don't really give a shit. Let it die. Who gives a fuck? I know? got a problem. I got a big problem with you, Buggy. Sure. A very, very big problem that I just, yeah. I, I got to get off my fucking chest. Okay. So, uh, 2016, uh, Drommeler is just picking up steam, and, and it's starting to, like, move into, like, this this whole new world, right? We're, we're covering... Everything, you know, we're not just covering gaming anymore. We've moved into all of YouTube. All of a sudden, a video comes out from PewDiePie and Markiplier and that bald fucker from Toronto where they're saying, you know, that, you know, uh, YouTube is changing and drama is ruining the, the whole website. And Reddit, Reddit picks this up, right? And Reddit gets all over it. And they're very, very critical of drama now. And uh, apparently, like anybody that talks about drama is is like they're the the the, the new evil, right? Um, during that time, when there was any topic going on, Nicole Arbor, you name it, like I would report on it on Drama Alert. But then I would also watch you. I would watch H three H three. I would watch a couple different commentators. Uh, you know, Grade Leafy at that time. Um, at Philip DeFranco, I wanted everyone's input, not just, I wanted to know what the community, I wanted to get that sense of what the community was. And you were one of the most valuable people that I watched that talked about drama because you gave it right down the middle. All right. And I know people criticize you. Oh, you're too nice or you're pandering or all that. But like, that is an important, um, opinion to add into the conversation always because what will happen is there'll be a situation where everybody is just hammering someone and you will give them an out you always give whoever's under attack an out and it's important for me to hear that i need to hear that boogie commentary but when they did this on reddit and when they attacked everybody for talking about drama you stopped you completely stopped and i feel like your channel has suffered because of that it probably I, did. I, I, I can only imagine I'd be at, at closer to a million plus views on a, on a video if I was doing that. But I'll tell you, at the end of the day, this is, again, me deciding to be true to myself. And so I ended up covering uh, Matthew Santoro's plagiarism thing. You remember, like, they had found that there was lists that he was, like, recycling or whatever. And, like, the argument was whether or not it was transformative what in a, a transformative nature of what Matthew Santoro was doing. And I made the argument that maybe it was and maybe it wasn't because that's what I always fucking do. And I released that video and I felt like dog shit for a week. And I, the negative, the feedback I was getting was like so horrendous because, you know, when you quote pander, I guess what everybody expects me to be doing, picking one side is pandering. The going down the middle is the opposite of pandering because you piss off twice as many people. You have people on both sides of the thing fucking despising your message because, mm -hmm. yeah, you did say the thing that I agree with full argument boogie because it but, can work uh, the other way. Well, that it, it does. It does. What I'm saying is you, you, when you preach moderation, you reach a very large section because most people are moderate. Right. But the, the, the trade off to that is you deal with extremists on both sides instead of just one side. And that sucks shit. That sucks so I bad feel like to, in my to be called a uh, to be called a fucking uh, Hillary Velton cuck piece of shit, sellout, uh, you know, progressive, whatever. And also being called a fucking Nazi dog whistler all in the same day. It's fucking shit. It's shit. I would not do that if it wasn't true to myself because it's a shitty way to do things. But 
So I, I'd show both sides of Matthew Santoro's thing, and people are like, oh, I can't believe you defended Matthew Santoro. And because I've been friendly with Matthew Santoro, I haven't talked to Santoro in two years, but it, what, because I have been friendly with Santoro at VidCon and stuff, I mentioned that in the video. Say, so keep in mind, I am also friendly with Matthew Santoro. Not friends, but we've talked. Um, and people are like, just fucking ripping me a brand new asshole. And I can't, I can't handle that kind of fucking shit. I have an anxiety disorder. I can't fucking do it. And so I lost week sleep all week. And then the next big thing going around was Toby Turner and like the Franco reported on Turner and and it's like drug use and his womanizing and that stuff. And I covered the story again, saying, you know, I kind of defending Toby a little bit, but then also vilifying him too, and talking about the facts of it. And then that just left this disgusting taste in my mouth. And I'm like, what if, what did I achieve by covering this? Right? Like if I cover drama, I want to achieve something. So I'll talk about Logan Paul because I can achieve something there. I'll talk about Nicole Arbor because I can achieve something there. But what do I achieve by just, you know, what did I achieve with the Matthew Centauro story? Nothing. What did I achieve by Toby Turner? Nothing. Nothing uh, that brought dude, me any pleasure. We're so different because like literally when I talk about drama, like I feel so happy and so so when that video goes out and people listen to what I have to say on it, like I get so happy and the days that there is no drama, I'm like literally depressed. I'm like, oh, can people please fight? Like, holy <laughs> shit, that's a horrible way to be thinking. Isn't, I'm isn't sorry. That, isn't that that's signs not how of narcissism? I'm I, that's I not how I'm thinking. That's how I'm feeling. Yeah. That's how I'm feeling. It's I mean, I've said, it, I've said it in public, Keemstar, and I, I, you know, we've been friends, friendly, I guess, for a long time. That said, you're a bit of a sociopath in that regard and that, man, I hope other people are in miserable pain today so I can fucking talk about it. Yeah, oh, it's tin, okay. That's who you tin are. Foil, I, you know. Tid Foyle just clipped that one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're not allowed to mention him on the show. You're not allowed to mention him on the show, Keem. Yeah, hey, you brought it up earlier today, and I don't want to talk about it on the show. So, but l listen, um, I don't. It, does that make me a sociopath? I feel like you know anybody that is a fan of entertainment wants drama. Anybody that is a that watches movies, that's a fan of movies, that's fan of TV shows or whatever, we want drama. I think this is just like a normal thing. This is like what we like. I don't oh, think most that definitely. makes me people a want fucking blood. And it's the same case with this Jake Paul story as well. People want fucking blood. So I don't think that really makes me a sociopath. I feel like, you know, we, we came from, you know, ancient Rome where we threw two men in the middle of the ring to fight to the death. That is uh, what we're always going to be interested in right. as humans. And, and that's where that's where I don't fit into the drama sphere because I don't want Logan Paul's blood. I want Logan Paul's redemption. That's what I fucking want. I want him to be a better person. I want to make his audience of fucking 40 million or however many people he's up to now. I want them to make him slightly better. I want I want him to make amends for the shit he's done. I don't want him to bleed. Everybody was, kill him, destroy him, kill PewDiePie because he said the N-word because he's a fucking Nazi sympathizer. No, man, just fucking let PewDiePie grow as a person and get better and then do better things. That's what I want. You know, so and, it's so weird that you actually have like a mission and you like, you know what you want. Like, cause I honestly, it bothers me. Like I've been labeled as this evil mastermind plotter that's plotting this, you know, crazy world domination, but I actually don't even know what I want. I don't even know what I'm trying to achieve with, with, with my platform. I, don't I know, know exactly what I want. I just want to entertain myself. And that's pretty much it. There are a few other factors, but that's pretty much it. So when I talk about a certain topic, I'm giving my true opinion because that's what's entertaining to me. It's entertaining for me to give it. I want to be. I, I, I just want. I just want to be remembered. You sounded like such a narcissist when you said that. That's that's not narcissism. That's not narcissism. I think you really sounded need to. Like I think you me. need to fucking Wikipedia this shit, Keemstar, and then scroll down. I mean, the, I could scroll down the fucking bullet I, points of what narcissism is. And then I think you might be able to identify a few things with yourself. Okay, who wants to pull uh, it up? Who wants to I'll pull, do it? Pull I got it. Well, I'm not uh, saying we have to nothing. do it on the fucking podcast. No, we're doing no, it right no, now. No, we're doing it right now. We're doing it right now. Uh, now. Are some, you? Uh, are you a? Are you? A narcissist. Number sign number one: unilateral listening. What I want and what I have to say are all that matters when we talk together. When uh, we oh, make decisions, shit. what you want, your concerns, your feelings—they are mere whispers, inconveniences, and maybe irrelevances. So when we discuss issues, my opinions are right, yours are wrong, or else of minimal <laughs> importance. If you've expected to have input, you're undermining me. <laughs> Fucking bingo. Oh, that sounds like okay. team. Okay. Oh. No. Number number two, it's all about me. 
I know more, I know better, I'm more interesting. When we talk, it's mostly about me. In conversations, I take up almost all of the airtime. Almost all of my chatter is about what I have done and what I am thinking about. It's too perfect, yep. really. Okay, roll number three. The oh. rules do not apply to me. I can have affairs. I can cut in the line. I can cheat on my taxes. I can ignore rules that get in my way of doing what I want. Rules are for other people to follow. Okay, that doesn't apply to me. That doesn't apply to me. I follow the rules. Okay, good. All right, well, one out of four here. Your concern. Okay, number four, uh, your concerns are really criticizing of me, and I hate being criticized. Narcissists paradoxically manifest both an inflated idea of their own importance and quickness to feel deflated by negative feedback. Criticism hurts. I can criticize others and often do, but if you criticize me, you're hurting my feelings, so I'm going to hurt you back. That that's just that's, okay. Keemstar. That's that's like now listen. Keemstar. Now listen. Keemstar. You might be eight percent black, but you're also seventy five percent narcissistic. No, listen. No, I would say fifty percent because that last one doesn't apply. I yeah, always get no, and I'll let me explain. Everyone always he says just, Keemstar. He just proved it. He just did the exact thing by ex by explaining oh! it. By explaining it. Yes, because you cut him off and said you don't. You basically just cut him off and were like, no, no. Listen, all right, listen. Listen, you kept saying yeah, that. Yeah, your opinion doesn't matter. Listen to my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, all right. Well, let's <laughs> yeah, move on. I, he's number so five. Aware. Number five. But he's the, so but the problem, five. No, but the I'm problem right. is, is I've I'm already right. admitted to one and two. I'm trying to explain four, point four. <laughs> okay, all right. You have 30 seconds. Right. Go. This is why important. Why, why do I got a time limit, you narcissist? Oh, there we go again. <laughs> narcissistic. Because I want to talk. You're right. I'm wrong. Exactly. God damn it, King. I know I'm a narcissist. I've already taken this test. Okay. As far as not being able to take criticism, all right, I've been labeled as a person that can't take criticism. But the criticism that I can't take is the criticism that is incorrect. If it is incorrect, I don't accept your criticism. If it is valid, I do. Michael Buckley has said, let other people be wrong about you. And if you're not a narcissist, it's easy. And if you are a narcissist, it is not. Okay, here's the let criticism. Other people Keemstar. be wrong about you. You are a narcissist. Just accept it. Otherwise, Whatever. You are a okay, fine. I, I, I want to finish this list. Number five, I'm right. You're wrong. So when things go wrong between us, it's always your fault. I can't be expected to apologize or to admit blame. I'm above others and above reproach. If you expect me to say how I've contributed to a problem, I'm going to get mad at you. That. Well, that's not that's not true. That doesn't apply. Okay. I've apologized and then finally, many times. N n number six, I may be quick to anger, but when I get angry, it's because you, you made me mad. You didn't listen. You criticized me. You're trying to control me. Your view is wrong. So you're the one that needs to apologize, not me. Is that you, Kim? Okay, like that one's 50-50. That's 100%. All right, that one's 50-50. That one's I'll take half of a point on that one. Look, okay, I might be a little narcissistic, whatever, all right? But clown, you're lazy, and that's worse. That's absolutely worse, being lazy. At least I'm producing content and doing what I'm supposed to do, entertaining my fans. You don't make any content. You made one video in the full 2017 is there a point there for trying to shift the blame onto someone else for being called out? It doesn't <laughs> matter. I think that was it doesn't four. matter. Wasn't that number four or five? It That's one it of them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're still lazy. All right. Well, I'm a fat. Well, I'm a fat piece of shit that ate myself to near death. So you know, fuck you. I mean, we all we all have our shit, Keem. You know, I no. ate so much that my dick was a distant memory for a while. Okay. Damn. Damn. Yeah, let's bad. let's talk about the uh, kangaroo pouch. No, that you were telling no, us no, no, before, no, 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 we no. We're not talking show. about this disgusting shit. No, before we start this show, basically Boogie was talking about loose skin and stuff, and they were going into great detail, and I almost puked. We're not having this discussion. Oh, I, they'll like, love it though. You want to just hit mute? Fucking just mute us, Keemstar. Now let's talk about my skin, my fucking gross skin that covers my cock and balls. It's so bad. See, Boogie, it's you, so you bad. You remind me of myself just a little bit, where you're not really to it, like. You, you know, you, you hate yourself for your weight, and I, I've hated myself in the past for my weight to some bit, but you, you kind of wear it, if that makes sense. I remember when your chair caved out from underneath you, and I asked you about it in DMs. You, you, you didn't hesitate to send me a picture of your ass. 
No, man, I, I fucking own who I am. It's fine. You know, like, I, I, I don't like being fat. I never enjoyed being fat. I was in a lot of pain. I was disgusted with myself. But at the same time, that is the body I'm in. And then I don't, you know, it's the only body I got, right? Like, if I could choose to be in some fucking skinny, you know, ripped dude's body, I would do that. But I can't be. I'm in this one. And so I, I need to do the work. And in order to do the work, the very first thing I have to do is own who and what I am, you know? And so, like... It, I'll get shirtless on stream. I don't give a fuck. I've, I've shown my body on YouTube. I don't, you know, it, uh, to be honest with you, if there's, if there was ever a medical reason, if someone wanted, needed to see what I looked like naked, I would do it fucking publicly. I don't care. It's just, it's just, it's nothing. It doesn't matter. I'm an, at the end of the day, I'm kind of like a borderline nihilist, I guess. I, I, I kind of, I, I, I'm a mix between a theist and a nihilist. I believe that when I die, nothing happens. I just go back to where I came from. So who gives a shit really what happens to this lifetime? It's just fun. Right. I, don't just like have fun. I, I really don't like to think that far ahead, but like I, 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 I there, there's two different kinds of fat people. There's a fat person that knows they're fat and they wear it and they, they but they, you know, what they, we don't do, we, I'm saying we, because we're in the same boat here. We don't promote that. It's, it's okay being fat. Cause it's not, it's unhealthy. Like there's so many bad things. If you're fat, whatever but don't promote that being fat's good don't encourage I, other people to be I will, fat. don't i will don't tell you what, i draw the line that, and i preach this on my youtube channel all the time and i'll never change this message um should people should fat people be attacked and disdained i don't think so because uh, it generally makes the problem worse uh they already have self-esteem issues attacking a, self, a person with self-esteem issues st- statistically speaking is probably going to make it worse for them i know it's definitely helped some people I know some people, fat shaming has pushed them in the right direction, but they are an anomaly that's not the common case. And I can tell you that from years and years of group therapy. So do not, do I think fat people should hate themselves? No, I don't think they should. Um, Should a fat person love themselves and even love the body they're in? You know what? I'm okay with that. That's cool. That's fine. Uh, You know, I love being fat. Okay. You know, that's fine. It's your body, your choice. It doesn't really affect me. Just do your thing to try to promote it to other people. Being fat is good. Being fat, health at any size. No, you. Can, there's no such thing as health at any size. You're damaging your organs. You're damaging your body. You're damaging your knees. You're damaging your back every day that you're overweight. And that's not healthy. And you're healthy until you're not. And it's like a fucking ship hitting an iceberg. When it finally hits, you fucking start dying and you don't stop dying till you're fucking dead. And maybe it'll happen all at once, right? And, and you know, there's, there's so many, you know, these health at any size models, these fucking, you know, heavy girls, heavy guys, you know, Ralphie May was healthy till he's dead, you know, but he's dead at 39, you know, I, I, and so don't I, I'll never be a person who promotes health at any size because I think it's fucking lunacy. And I think anyone who is overweight probably needs to work towards a healthier lifestyle of being less overweight. And I will never encourage anyone to stay the size there are. I'll never encourage anyone to, to get bigger. I'll never say that it's okay to be fat because it's not because you're killing yourself and you're going to die early and I don't want you to die early. Now, you shouldn't hate yourself and you shouldn't subject yourself to other people who hate you. You should just do the work. And in order to do the work, most fat people need to learn to love themselves. You know, and, and that's, that's one of the hardest things in order for me to even love, allow love, myself love to have this surgery enough just to lose weight and actually better right. myself rather than just dealing with it right. and trying to, trying to say, this is who I am and I'm just going to live like that forever. Right. And, but again, at the end of the day, I don't fault people who are like, you know what? I like being fat and I'm going to stay fat. I, it turns me on sexually. I know people who've been turned on by their own fat. I know people are just like, it's how I identify. All right, that's fine. Just live your life. Do your thing. That's okay. Fuck it. Right. But I, 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 even that person would be like, but keep in mind, it's a very unhealthy choice. You're going to die early because of it. That's, okay. As so long three, as you're aware of questions, that, then, we're good. Okay. Sorry. Three questions. Is fat shaming wrong is the first one. Uh, is anything wrong? I mean, is, you know, is it helpful? That's a more important question to me. Is it helpful? And it's not. You can you can you can always put a twist on this because I, I feel I feel like th- th- there's different ways you can fat quote unquote fat shame like um, I remember I remember at one point like I, I'm I'm still fat now but at one point it was like really bad and you can you can see that in old videos that I did with like Max and stuff like that like that that's to me when it was bad and the only reason I started losing weight was because the criticism wasn't from people online I could completely ignore that they never faced me but when my friends were saying it to me as in like they were making fun of me but at the same time after making fun of me they're like listen, we're actually worried about your health. Like, you, do you want our help? Can we help you? Can we give you advice? That, that, that's when I was like, okay, I'm okay with like Max calling me, calling me. Like if you go back on old videos and stuff like that, like Max would, or old live streams, Max would rip into me about my weight. But I, I knew in the back of my head that he wasn't doing that to have a laugh or, 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 or to make fun, fun of me. He was doing that because he was worried about me, you know? And I, I, I was smart enough to know that. 
any any other person might have taken that as like a as an attack and gotten really mad like oh my friends are just mean to me but to me i was like it's just it's it's him worried about me and him saying these these stuff to me because he wants me to lose weight and i did i lost i lost uh, an, a, a tw- uh, 25 kilos i don't know what that is in pounds to pounds hang on I'll Google it real quick. I, I, I lost 55 pounds and I felt a lot better. I, to, to this date, I don't think I need to lose any more weight. But as soon as my weight becomes a problem again, I will lose more weight. Here's what I will tell you. I have been fat shamed to, since I was a fucking baby. I mean, just straight up. I was fat at five and I've been fat shamed. And when I say fat shaming, I don't mean people like you're saying, you know, doing it out of love or kindness, right? I, I don't mean anybody like, you know, man, I'm really worried about you. You know, that's not fat shaming. If your aunt or your uncle's like, hey, wow, you've gotten a lot bigger this last year. Do you ever think about that? That's not fat shaming. That, you know, fat shaming is, hey, look at this fat, disgusting piece of shit. Or like throwing something at somebody eating in a restaurant or fucking taking photos of them as they're walking down the Walmart aisle or whatever. That's fucked up. Um, and did any of that ever help me? Not a fucking second. I've lost 150 pounds in the last six months. I've got another hundred or so to lose. And, and the people who fat shamed me, you didn't factor into it. You didn't make it easier. You might've made it harder at points because I was so fucking angry and pissed off and sad that I didn't want to help myself. Uh, but you certainly didn't fucking help. How so does that it- make you feel, Colossal is fucking crazy? Fat shaming all these people left and right. And then that's okay. I think, you know, make fun of whatever you want to make fun of. I don't really give a shit, you know? Yeah, I, I like I like a good fat joke. I've got a whole fucking fat joke set. Hey, you know why fat guys are so good at eating pussy? Uh, because we're just happy for the positive attention. No, just kidding. It's because it's like eating a snack, all right? It's like a roast beef RV sandwich, you know? The other day I was taking a piss. I, 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 I've been so fat for so long, my dick can now be declared legally dead. Okay, I haven't seen it in so long. I was taking a piss in the toilet the other day, and I heard a little clink on the, the porcelain and it turned out it was a tiny little bottle and I pulled out the tiny little bottle and inside it was a tiny little note and it said, dear Steven, I miss you. Please send pussy sincere, sincerely your prick. You know, fat jokes are funny. That's fine. Make a fat joke. As long as fat jokes are funny, make it funny. Then I'm all right. Oh yeah. That's you know, just, if it's just uh, an that's insult. Just, yeah. If yeah, it's just well, an insult clown, and who gives a shit. You never make I mean, funny clown fat doesn't, jokes. Cl- yeah. I clown doesn't do. make fat. Uh, my fat jokes are the fucking best. No clown. In your in your like videos where you were talking about kid behind the camera, you're like, oh look at this fucking pig, look at this disgusting. And he thought it was fucking vile. hilarious. He thought it was yeah, fucking but funny. but but it wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke. I yeah, mean, you were literally joke. just assaulting them. Hey, Michael, if you're listening, we worry about you, man. Lose some fucking weight, brother. Of course, of course, yeah. I was joking around, fucking about. It's comedy. Yeah, but yeah, but you, dude, you're like Logan Paul. Like that's how you get out of shit. Oh, I was just joking. I was just joking. I don't know. Ah, let's let's joking. not. Let's. But not it is pull that is that is comedy the category. Of Logan Paul. I don't think he's quite there yet. <laughs> right. Okay, that just might be extreme. But I'm saying mm. you can't just say everything's a joke. No, I'm not saying everything is a joke. But when I make a fat joke, okay, it's a well, fat well, okay. joke. Well, Buggy just gave an example. Of like going into a restaurant and saying, wow, you're fat or something because someone's eating, right? Is that a fat joke? If if somebody walks up to me at a restaurant and is like, wow, you're fucking disgusting. That's out of place. If somebody walks up to me and goes, hey, did you leave enough for the rest of us? That's going to hurt my feelings, but at least it was a joke. At least it was funny, right? And I'm, I'm going to try to laugh that off. You give me an out. Give me an out and I'll be okay with it. You know? I think there's a massive difference. If I come up to Boogie right now. And say, listen, you fat piece of shit. I fucking despise you. I hope you hang yourself. Although the problem is... But you literally say the same type of shit weight. in your video. No, it's the way you say it. It's what you say. It all factors in. Yeah, of oh course, right? Yeah, and it's also a... the person saying it. This shit's never welcome from like a fucking stranger, you know? But if it's somebody I know and somebody we've been friends with and I know you're just busting balls, that's fine, you know? That's fine. Clown Even, is a stranger I'm, I am of a stranger. all these yeah, people. I am a stranger. He is but fat it's, it's shaming. It's fucking comedy. You're just making jokes on someone else's expense. Uh, oh, no, I'm, there's no. Right normally, now. normally, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. Normally, the person that is saying the fat shaming thinks it's funny. Normally. Normally, the person telling Boogie, "You're a fat piece of shit. Go fucking kill yourself." That's not they a fucking think what joke. They said That's is not a funny. joke. Yeah, but that no, that's not well, a joke. Th- but you say stuff sim- very similar to no, this in your I video. No, I don't. I have never told. Why are you fu- being I've so never defensive? Told anyone to fucking kill themselves. Why are you being so defensive? You narcissism. The the other criticism that I have <laughs> is like if it, uh, like if it's just a boring joke, <laughs> you narcissism. He's such a retard. Uh, when it, 
When it's just a stupid, boring joke. When it's just like, boom, Bob, hey, wide load. You look like Gabe Newell. Fuck you, right? That's boring. That's boring. If it's boring, I don't give a shit. If I've heard it a million times, be creative. But if, since you're probably stupid, you can't be creative. Clown, what? what did you fucking call me? I called you a retard. Would you prefer me to call you something oh, else? Oh, so now you're having to go off? at Tommy NC2010, are we? That doesn't Please make any that sense. Autist out of this. It just doesn't make any sense. All right, back on track. Can we get off the fat shaming, all right? We, we, clown, you're a fat shamer. Just wear it. Stop being a narcissist. I, right? am, a, I am a fat shamer. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Three questions. What are your other two questions? I want to hear them. Oh, right. Well, we kind of already covered them. I was going to ask, okay. like, is fat shaming wrong? Yes or no? Covered it. Yeah. And then I was going to follow up with the second one. Is making jokes fat shaming? I mean, it depends. I mean, probably to a stranger, probably to somebody who doesn't know any better. But if you're busting your friend's balls, no, that's okay. Does he have to be a friend? I mean, it would be better. Does he have to be a friend to make, do you have to be a friend to make fun of someone? I don't think so. I don't think that's true. I mean, it would be better at least to be acquainted. Be I mean, better, no, but I mean, do you have to do that? Is it wrong to do that? I don't think it is. Because otherwise we'd never, what about stand up fucking comedians who are making jokes at other people's expense? They're not fucking friends with them. I will admit that George Carlin's bit on fat people is one of my favorite George Carlin bits, honestly. So, I mean, yeah, that's fine. But again, he's a stand-up comic. He's not just some drunk asshole at a bar. You know? <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a fucking YouTuber sometimes when I can be fucking asked. So if I'm making jokes on someone as an entertainer, and I use that term loosely, then what's wrong with that? Another thing loosely is going to be your ass after you get molested. I'm probably being a little experiment. hypocritical here because I didn't like Nicole Arbor's video was meant to be jokes, but it just wasn't funny. Well, that's it that's fucking good. that's because of Nicole fucking Arbor. She came on this. She came, she made this video covered in more makeup than a fucking clown, and she, her jokes are just shit. So no wonder it failed. No wonder it bombed because it wasn't fucking funny. That was the problem, and it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning: make a fucking fat joke, but make it fucking funny. Otherwise, it's your failure. It just can't be the same thing over and over again. You look like Gabe Newell, man. Oh, well, you're like Snorlax from Pokemon. Ugh. All right, well, you're fucking 12. Like, get an actual sense of humor. Hey, say something I've never heard. I'm going to laugh at it. You know? That's we we got we to gotta wrap it up here. Um, but uh, we don't have thanks, to. Thanks, Boogie. Thanks for... Well, I mean, we, we're at an hour. Dude, this new There's game no is out. It's limit. called There's Sea no of Thieves. There's no fucking time limit, Keemstar. There's no time well, limit. I just Speak made up. a goddamn time limit because I'm a narcissist, bitch. <laughs> Again, you really need to fucking use Wikipedia. You need to find out what this I, is. I feel, I feel, I feel like we finally. Hit oh, the first of all, can we just explain why you're skinny? You want to fat shame everyone, right? But we can afford to eat, motherfucker. If you upload it more than one video a year, maybe you could have a nice meal yourself instead of living in some third world fucking country eating some bootleg ramen noodles. Now fucking get a job, go to work, and get the fuck off my podcast. Boogie, thanks for coming it's not on. Your podcast. That's hey, thanks it. for having me, by the way. Hey, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, twitch.tv slash boogie two nine eight and youtube.com slash B O O G I E two nine eight eight. Uh you can come fat shame me there all you want. I as long as it's funny. So come come pick me up hard. Thanks again, Good Boogie. Stuff. Thanks. Thank everyone. you very much. Thanks for having me. Hey, if you're still here, just, just before you leave, quick reminder, uh, this, this video was sponsored by SkinHub. Uh, head over to SkinHub.com. Use code BETA. Free $1 credit. Come on. Do it. Do it. Free $1 credit. SkinHub. Come on. SkinHub.com. If you're, if you're a lazy piece of shit and you can't type the code in the referral links down below, all right? Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye-bye.